Today, I'm challenging my three younger brothers to a cooking challenge. The challenge will be made up of three rounds, appetizer, entree, and dessert. But I will have a free pass to the dessert round, leaving my three brothers to fight to see who's worthy to face off against me. And if one of them is lucky enough to beat me, I will follow the winner around for an entire day and be their personal private chef. Oh, let's go. Right. We'll start with round one, the appetizer round. Gentlemen, open your baskets. Oh, oh man. For the appetizer round, the baskets contain chew toro tuna, watermelon, dill, and molasses. You've got 20 minutes on the clock. Your time starts now. For the appetizer round, I'm going to make some uh, kebab type thing. I'm really hoping I can face off against Nick today uh, and go against him in the finals so he can be my private chef for a day. He's the oldest and I'm the youngest, so. I'd love to maybe get back at him after all these years. You're gonna have to get through us first, buddy. I'm going to be making a tuna tartare, and I'm gonna mix that in with a little bit of watermelon cubes as well. I'm actually not loving these ones, get so out. I'm gonna take get out. a couple of these ones. And I will be making uh, some tacos. I will be making a tuna watermelon poke bowl. So I'm gonna scrape out all the watermelon from the inside, get a little rice, add the tuna, and see if I can add anything else that will elevate my dish. I've fractured my wrist. Does it put me at a disadvantage? Yeah. Will I use it as an excuse? No, unless I lose. So I've never used molasses before, but it feels like something that you would put in a sauce. So I'm adding it to the yogurt, and we're gonna try and make a bit of a sauce with some yogurt, dill, and molasses. I think what I'm gonna do is make an aioli with a little molasses and soy. I'm hoping I can get some of the oaky flavor without too much of the sweet. And then I'll mix that in with a little mayo. 10 minutes left, guys, 10 minutes left. Ah, uh, just because I have it here and I don't know how to use it, I might incorporate this into my sauce. I'm only gonna do a little bit here because I don't want to overpower it. So now I'm going to cut up my tuna. I'm gonna just take off the end here to really make it nice and sharp. And then I'm gonna use one of my nice watermelon cubes as a reference so that they're all the same size. Into my tuna, I go with a little bit of soy, then hit it with some sesame. I think I'm gonna wait to add the watermelon, however, because I don't want the flavors of the soy corrupting the sweet flavors of the watermelon too soon. You guys have five minutes left. Five minutes left and you're done. Five minutes is not a lot of time, but luckily these only need to hit the pan for about 10 seconds each side. Time for some Pam. Oh, let's listen for a sizzle. I'm pressing it down to make sure it gets cooked evenly, but unfortunately, unlike Nick, I don't have my heat proof hands yet. I'm gonna go for my second flip. That's hot. <laughs> Two minutes left. Get the food on the plates. So I know Nick loves ramen, so I'm gonna crush it up and then I'm gonna sprinkle it on top when I'm done. My knife skulls are hurting a little bit because of this whole brace thing, but I'm doing my best I can to dice this tuna pretty finely. There's only a few seconds left, so I'm gonna sprinkle over some dill. I have a nice mix of watermelon and tuna. Come in with the spring onions. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands up, hands up. Good Looking work. good, guys. That Looking good. Good, good work, boys. Oh, guys. I forgot to put the sauce on. Oh, <laughs> what? Is that molasses and dill? Yep. That's two of your ingredients. Guys, congratulations. The dishes look fantastic, and honestly, I'm surprised you pulled it together in that short amount of time. With that said, I've got a surprise judge for the first round. Mom and dad will be judging what? this round. <laughs> <laughs> Our first dish here is this tuna and watermelon skewer dish. Which one would be the tuna and which one would be the watermelon? I kind of like to know if I'm digging into that. The next dish is this tuna avocado tartare. They've placed a raw egg yolk on the top. I can actually pop it for you guys if you like. The final dish is this watermelon poke bowl, and they unfortunately forgot to add their sauce. It's an interesting combination of flavors. So now you've got a decision to make. Are you going to eliminate dish number one, dish number two, or dish number three? This one is quite creative. Going in the middle, I don't know what the powder is on the side. I get a little nervous when I see that raw egg. Third one, I just don't know. They all look pretty good. Unfortunately, it looks like we're, we're going to need to eliminate number three. Thanks a lot, Mom and Dad. <laughs> Cameron, that was one-handed. That's impressive. Cameron, please say bye to your competitors. Say bye to Mom and Dad. Pack your things. It was a pleasure. Well fought. <laughs> good luck. Bye, Mom and Dad. Good luck, guys. Have a good life. Bye. Have a good one. Bye, Cam. Will? Pete? Congratulations on moving to the next round. One of you will have the opportunity to cook against me to see if I'm your private chef for an entire day. Now, I've got quite the surprise for the entree round. Feel free to reveal the entree round. What oh the? My God. How did you get that thing here? This is a live Alaskan king crab that we shipped overnight. If you guys are going to be worthy enough to face off against me, you're going to need to be able to cook a beast like this. For the entree round, I'm putting 20 minutes on the clock starting now. You guys split that crab down the middle and good luck. Let's go. I call let's right go, side. Let's I call go. right side. I got left. All right, should we break this down together and then go our separate ways? You would like that, every man for himself. These legs are extremely spiky, so I'm just trying to do this carefully. 
so that my hand doesn't end up looking like Cam's. Lid on, looking good. So I've decided that I'm gonna make a carbonara. I think what I'm gonna do is cook the pasta in the very same water that the crab is in. A, because it's already boiling and I'm pretty tight on time. Also, it's gonna get that flavor from the crab right into the pasta. For my dish, I'm gonna do a king crab fried rice. I've never worked with king crab before and I'm not too familiar with fried rice, but stick to the basics, but keep it refined. When I win, uh, I used to make waffles every morning for everyone and Nick would never eat mine, so. I think I'll have him make me a nice gourmet waffle breakfast. That's a lot of confidence I'm hearing out of Will. Roast him in the comments, put him back in his place. <laughs> I'm gonna slice up this bacon, which is gonna add some really nice grease and flavor into my final dish. I'm starting with some leftover rice. Uh, I think we ordered Indian last night, so there's a bunch of orange spots in there, but that's all right. It goes with the color of the red crab. Is either of you guys paying any attention at all to the crab? Is it done? I don't know. Because getting a live crab like this is so rare and expensive, I'm gonna help them out and see if it's done. Take a little bite of that. I need to get all this crab out of here because my pasta depends on it. I'm gonna steal the two claws because I'm gonna need these later. Well, if you got the claws, I'm getting the head. You guys have 10 minutes left, you better hurry up. Oh, geez. My fried rice is looking pretty good. Uh, rather fried, if you will. I'm just gonna toss in some butter just to give it a little bit of extra flavor and creaminess. Always taste your food. Oh yeah. My pasta is in. I'm gonna start getting together the sauce. That will be that beautiful creamy base of my carbonara. With so much stuff going on, it's easy to let things get ahead of you in the kitchen here. I'm gonna get this dancing in the pan, lower the heat a bit, so I definitely don't wanna overdo it. You have five minutes left. If your hands aren't up and your plates aren't done in five minutes, I'm going to disqualify you. I really hope this pasta is done in time. I think that I'm going to take this head off here, dry it out, and use it to plate my fried rice in. I'm opening up this leg here, dice this part up, and it's gonna go right in my rice. I'm making Uncle Roger proud, and I'm gonna make it rain MSG. I'm gonna grab my fried rice here and start layering it in. You know, Uncle Roger doesn't like to put peas and carrots and corn in his fried rice, but the rest look pretty good to me. It's actually pretty flavorful. We'll have to see what the judge thinks. It's time to pull the pasta. I really don't have much left here. I'm gonna go straight with that pasta into my pan over here, which is now pretty much not on heat, and go right in with that carbonara mixture that I've made and some pasta water that I reserved. I'm gonna add it slowly in and whisk until I get that exact creamy consistency that I'm looking for. Pete, 30 seconds left, get it on the plate. I'm just chopping up my chives here and I'll throw them on top. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands up, you're done. I really wish I had a few more seconds there, but Whew. I'm happy that we got that all done in time. It's like a good carbonara though. Not bad yourself. Pete, Will, the dishes look fantastic. So it's time to bring in our next judge. Good to see you guys again. <laughs> how we doing? <laughs> Welcome bro, love you. Is this new? Oh, how the turntables. Cam, you are responsible for deciding who gets to cook against me in the dessert challenge. All right, let's start tasting. Our first dish is a king crab carbonara. Right off the bat, it looks fantastic. He didn't put any pepper. Besides that, I think he's pretty much checked all the boxes. Honestly, really good. The sauce is not chunky at all. There's no cooked egg in it. It's all smooth. It's all very tasty. This next dish is a king crab fried rice. I really like the plating. I love how they put it in the head of the king crab, and I'm excited to try it. Hmm. Also very good, quite flavorful. The only thing I'd say is that it's a tad on the salty side, but overall, a really strong dish. I've thought hard about these two dishes. You both did a fantastic job, but the winner is... Pete. Let's go! Will, say goodbye to your competitors. Please pack your things. Hell of a carbonara. See you, Will. Bye, Willie. You Bye, guys. Will. And then there were two. Pete, if you beat me in this challenge right now, I will follow you around for 24 full hours and be your private chef. Are you prepared for that? You better prepare for an early wake up tomorrow. The dessert round will be a 10 minute challenge. I have no idea what's in these baskets. You ready? Yep. Open your basket. What? For the dessert round, the baskets contain almonds, gummy worms, Rice Krispie treats, and Oreos. Pete, I hope you're thinking about what you're gonna make, but I'm gonna hit you with one last twist. If you so choose, I will allow you to bring back both of the brothers to help you with this final dessert round. Or you can do it by yourself. There's no catch? No. Well, this is a no-brainer. The boys are back. Woo! <laughs> Give me the order, chef. And with that, your 10 minutes starts now. Will, I need you to open the Rice Krispie Treats. Get those moving. Cam, I need you to preheat the oven 350. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn these into the base of a nice cheesecake. And then we're gonna turn this into a nice fruity sauce over the top. Come on, get it together, Will. Cam, I need you to find cream cheese, a okay. blender, and sugar. Yes, Chef. Will, I need you to get a saucepan on low heat with water and these gummy bears. Go. Yep. Yes, Chef. I'm gonna take care of grounding all these up and making them into a nice buttery base for the bottom of our cheesecake. I've never seen them come together as such a team like this, and I feel like I shouldn't have offered this to Pete. 
I don't want to be Pete's private chef for a day. I know he's going to make me do so much stuff. You're damn right I am. Remember that time you made me eat grass? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be doing an elevated take on dirt and worms. It was one of my favorite dishes growing up as a kid, and the second I saw the Oreos inside that mystery box, I knew what I was going to make. This is my dust for the top of the dirt and worms. Crush up some Oreos. One component of my dish is already done. I gotta melt these in the microwave, come on. I'm making a chocolate cup and this will be what goes inside. In addition to the scrapings of these insides of the Oreos. Pete, I've got the gummy worms in. I'm not sure they're gonna turn into a jelly like you want, but I'll get the heat going. Give it your best shot. Boil faster. Now that my chocolate is perfect velvety smooth, I'm gonna take a plastic cup and begin to pour that chocolate into the cup, spinning it around as I go. I'm basically using this cup as a mold to make a clay pot. I'll dump off that excess and into the fridge this goes. That'll stay in there until it hardens. Five minutes left, guys. Just five minutes left. We're mixing in our ingredients that are gonna make up the base. I'm trying to get this into a really nice consistency. I'm gonna use these Rice Krispies sparingly because to be honest, they're a bit tricky. It may not look like it's come together yet, but I can assure you this is going to be delicious. I think my cup is all set. Now the hardest part, actually taking it off the cup. I have to be so careful with this. This looks better than I could have ever thought, but I've got to heat this knife to cut the sides. Watch how simply and easily this knife cuts into the side of my chocolate. Perhaps one of the most satisfying things I've ever seen in this kitchen. And this will be my cup. Take a note also of the cleanliness of my station versus this. It looks like a bunch of mad scientists with a science experiment gone wrong. So you've chopped some almonds and opened the Oreos? And I made a cup. You're doing great, chef. Less chirping, more focus on ourselves. Because there are several layers to the earth, there are gonna be several layers to my dessert. First, I'll go in with some of this Cool Whip. I'll go in with my first layer of Oreos, as well as some of those almonds. Then again, with another layer of Cool Whip. And once I've done that, another layer of Oreos and a few more crumbled almonds. Just a final touch of Cool Whip. To finish, I wanna brush up the sides with cocoa powder. I want this to look like a legit pot that you'd have a plant in. Then I'll finish it with a real basil plant, which I'll take one piece out of, stick it into my plant, and I'll finish with a tiny dusting of Oreos and a few worms crawling out of the dirt. Behind, behind. Good, Cam, layer that in. And the moment of truth, we're gonna go down and actually plate this in the ramekin in the middle of our plate here. Beautiful. As a final layer, we're gonna go on top with a thin spread of Ready Whip. Now, Will's made a really nice sauce, so I'm gonna dot it around, but as the person is enjoying the dish, they'll get a little bite of gummy bear flavor with each bite of cheesecake. Five, four, three, two, one, hands up. Pete, are you happy with your decision to call the brothers back in? Yes, I am. You know what? We win and lose together as a team, and I think we're gonna win. Let's find out. Manny, get in here. Coming. So the first dish I have right here is a no-bake Oreo cheesecake. Looks like there's a little bit of whipped cream, some Oreo crumble, maybe some lime zest, some sort of sauce scattered throughout the plate. That's not at all what I thought it would taste like, but it's pretty good. Let's try this plant-looking dessert. This dish is a dirt and worms, and there's even a plant growing out of the top. Not gonna lie, this is pretty creative. This is really good. The plant pot is like kind of melting in my hand, though. Both fantastic desserts, but I think I have my answer. Today's winner is Pete. Let's go, what? <laughs> Woo! <sorry>. Yes! <laughs> what the f Look at that! I know, but- That's terrible! That is gonna be a good first bite of the next 24 hours. 